Their house is the most beautiful on earth. And for a short time in spring and summer, they share that shallow, clear water house with us. There are parts of the Silver King story that we simply don't know, and rightly so. Tarpon date back more than 100 million years. The modern human is 200,000 years old, so we're relatively new acquaintances. In this chapter, we follow Tarpon on their annual migration as they travel up and down the Atlantic and Gulf coasts through the Florida Keys and to parts unknown. There he is, hit him. Oh! Oh, beautiful. <laughs> I've done a lot of fishing in a lot of places, but never have I seen anything like this. This is our first stop, friends, Isla Morada, the centerpiece of the Florida Keys, a low-key destination measured not in acres or population, but mile markers. The mangroves, the sunsets, the water wearing the overseas highway like a concrete sash. It's the kind of place that makes talentless photographers look talented because the landscape does most of the work. Anglers have been sport fishing for tarpon in Florida since the late 1800s, the craft having been perfected in the Keys. Since then, the species has inspired tournaments, trophies, tags, conservation efforts, and foundational to it all, an inextinguishable passion among anglers. These fish are so old, some of them, you know, 70, 80, 90 years old, and they've seen all the flies and they've had plenty of boats in their paths on the way down here. If you look at not just the Florida Keys, but you look down the coastline of Florida, there's all these different flats. Ultimately, these fish are just trying to survive. They're in a migration just like something you'd see on the Serengeti, and these fish are doing the same thing. They're trying to survive. They've got sharks, they've got us fishing for them. But through this migration, they have to bob and weave through all of these different little points, and it becomes like a maze for them. Let's start at the beginning of the tarpon story, the spawn, and we'll see what hatches.
when you get out there and you see these fish swimming in a pattern of five wide, six wide, maybe only three wide, but in the earlier part of the season especially, it's amazing because they're so happy. Their tails are out of the water, they're rolling. I don't even need to throw at them at that point. I could just sit there and watch them swim by because the light's reflecting off their back and you watch them how they're just so mellow. It's one of the more spectacular things that you get to see in fishing. The Silver King story begins a hundred miles offshore where they go to spawn. We don't know where or how far or how deep the spawning takes place. It remains a mystery. The larva then moves into estuaries like Florida's Indian River Lagoon, where juveniles find shelter from predators. The juvies develop quickly, growing about two feet in two years. All the mullet are pushing into the rivers, they're going down the beach, they're migrating south. There's schools and schools, just hundreds of little tarpon in here, anywhere from like five to 30 pounds. temperature hits 75 degrees, thousands of tarpon leave the protection of the rivers and inlets for a mass migration along the Florida coast. With the Atlantic and Gulf acting as highways, these fish are going north and south constantly. One place you're sure to find them is the Marquesas Keys, a crescent-shaped collection of islands roughly 20 miles west of Key West. Use your eyes to spy them rolling and your ears to hear them gulping air. Probably my favorite thing to fly fish for, it's gotta be tarpon, you know, just the acrobatics in them, um, the, the eats that, you know, you get, you know, sometimes they're eating five feet from the boat and, you know, it's a 150 pound fish that's sucking down a fly that's, you know, two inches long. It's like that primal pull when you come tight on them. There's, it's, you know, it's not like catching a bonefish or a permit or, you know, even a red for that matter. I mean, when you come tight, you know. <laughs> and usually, you know, pure chaos kind of takes off afterwards. You know, the 30 seconds of him running and jumping and, you know, shooting around the boat and you're trying to clear your line and it can be kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of mayhem for a few minutes. Nice! To the reel. Hey, God, that feeling never gets old. One of my favorite things to do of all time. I mean, it, like I said, it just never gets old. Let's see if we can't land this fish real quick and let her go. Right here. Migration's next chapter takes us to Boca Grande on Florida's Gulf Coast, the most popular tarpon grounds on Earth.
Boca Grande Pass, one of the best known spots along the Tarpon Migration Trail. The largest gathering of tarpon on Earth, it's been called. They arrive each spring in droves. Drifting Boca Grande Pass to serve up live crabs is something of a contact sport. <laughs> These fish are what it's all about right now in Southwest Florida. For a couple months, they're here. The reason they're here is the amount of bait and food before they spawn and during their spawn. And all that stuff is affected by healthy estuaries and clean water. That's why it's so important for us to protect this stuff for the future generations. Look at that. Way too valuable to catch only once. Unreal. If we can present our crabs in front of them while they're swimming, we have a much better shot at getting bit. Come on, let's get a big old tarpon up here in the air for us. Come on. There's the jump we needed. Beautiful fish. They have the biggest heart. They never give up. All they think about is getting away, even when we get them beside the boat. Nice. I'd say 135, 140 fish. We're going to release this fish alive to fight another day, folks. Here she goes. Alive to fight another day. Meanwhile, in Ala Mirada, the traveling tarpon move across the flats in water that's four to eight feet deep. The light sandy bottom and clear water make for ideal sight fishing conditions for fly guides like Bo. When these fish migrate down the coastline, you want to try and ambush these fish. If you can, you try to place your boat just slightly off of their migratory path. If you can find depth close to shallow water, that's always great because these fish don't want to sit out too deep. They're worried more about predation. In an instant, the line goes from slack to taut. Let him run. Yeah, just bounce when he yeah. jumps. It's a big one. How about that tail kick? <laughs> he just nailed it. A little slower. Okay, neutral. Yep. Let me just get a little more backing in on him. Okay. Okay. We're good there. Forward? We're tight, yeah, just okay. forward slow. Keep reeling yep. real fast, just real fast, and if you get slack, you're right in the water All if you right, need we're to. Good. And don't forget, when she's up high, keep those angles a little bit lower until she starts to roll over, you know? Right. Yeah, pull it right down her lateral line. Yeah, yeah, she didn't like that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> see what I mean? Now left and a little bit low, see how she's yeah. up there? There you go. I got her now. She's starting to come up. Stick around, won't you? You'll see Bo's clients attempt to put this king in checkmate. Good luck with that, bud.
you're up there on the platform and you're anticipating these fish swimming by and then you see that string and you watch them in the distance and regardless of catching a fish or not, it's the beauty of watching those fish and it's a special thing to watch. Real down. <laughs> Got a release there at least. Woo! <laughs> That's a good one there, buddy. <laughs> That's the one thing we always talk about with these fish, it's the will. It doesn't help that they're so large. You know, it'd be one thing if you had a smaller fish that had a lot of will, but it's like the size of these fish in combination with the determination is pretty impressive. She just wants to go down. No. Oh! <laughs> Shoot. Good job, brother. Good job to you too, man. I have to do it again now, that's all that means. Come on, come on. Yeah, that fish was there, but I, it's sometimes it's weird. You start pulling, 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 and then all of a sudden, you know, that hook comes loose. Well, that's how it goes with tarpon. You may hook up, but only a very small percentage are boated. In the dead of summer, Key West waters reach 85 degrees. This is the angler's last call before the tarpon migrate once again. Fish will gather overnight and get in these big giant pods. We found these few spots that first light before they start their migration pattern as they're coming in from offshore from spawning, we'll get this opportunity. Right as the light's low, the fish are nice and happy. They're just kind of waking up. And if you can get a fly in front of them, they're gonna eat almost every time. Good job. Oh, I love my job. <laughs> you don't break their spirit early, which that's a gamble. So if you take your time and baby a little bit, I mean, even if you follow them with a boat, they feel any let up in that pressure. They get a second win, and instead of coming to the boat in five, 10, 15 minutes, they can dog you for an hour or two. stops as they head north again is southeast Georgia. The tarpon move into the brackish and freshwater estuaries to find the right water temperature. Fishing here I think is incredible. Comparing it to most places you get very, very little pressure. In a way, you wish everybody knew about it and wanted to come here, but kind of glad it's a little bit off the beaten path that not everybody knows about it. such a diverse ecosystem, whether you're fishing in the creeks or in the marsh, or whether you're fishing in the sound, or whether you're fishing out in the ocean, you've got different places that you can go chase tarpon. Imagine the world Tarpon saw 100 million years ago. They're living dinosaurs. The history of the ocean right there in front of you. Evolution at the end of a line. <laughs>